All right, hello YouTubers and welcome to my channel again on all things that have to do with uh, steam heating. And today we're going to be looking at a low water cutoff that has been around for over half a century for sure. Um, the McDonnell Meller number 67. This is the typical configuration that you would uh, tend to find it. Obviously, without being on the boiler, this was taken off a, a dead boiler. This is where the uh, connections would be made, uh, the, the connections of the uh, top sight glass fitting and the bottom sight glass fitting. Uh, if you're lucky, they've got uh, brass unions. Um, if you're unlucky, you have uh, uh, steel uh, connections. Then there's a, a upper T here, which is generally unique to the 67 uh, configuration and you have a regular T at the bottom and then your uh, sight glass fittings here um, a little worse for wear this is a half inch outside diameter tube that uh, hooks onto a compression fitting um, by half inch male adapter and uh, this is a unique OEM fitting here that's a sort of a compression T there which uh, very often leaks right there that there some of them get that alignment correctly and usually after a couple of years you'll see a lot of corrosion on that the rest of the body is an iron body of a particular shape um, usually here is where you have your pigtail uh, which or steam siphon which is um, protecting the pressure troll which is usually mounted um, somewhere up here usually there's a T and a uh, pressure gauge and so forth all getting in one uh, <clears throat> down here is a 3 8 inch plug which is when this thing is uh, new in the box this has been removed and there's usually a cardboard tube which prevents the float inside uh, from rattling around. There's the uh, designation. See if you can get it without the glare. It's a McDonald Miller product. And as I said, it's been around for a while. Usually the, the newer ones have this um, blowdown valve. Uh, many of you know about opening this up and um, allowing water to flow and then uh, you're supposed to shut it and you're supposed to do that about once a week uh, during the heating season. After a while this thing generally leaks and uh, the uh, drip tube at the end uh, becomes uh, rusted. This is a standard thing that happens to these things over time. You can see over here, I've got my props. And then let's go to them right now. So we've got a cutaway version of the 67. There's your brass outlet there. There's the T. Usually a clot will form there. So sometimes you have to get inside of here to break that up. I've had that happen to me a few times. You can see the inside is pretty crusty. And this is the uh, close-up of the, of the ball valve. And so if you want to blow it down, that's what's actually happening right there. He's got, this is a replaceable component in theory, what generally happens though is these guys uh, break off inside the uh, the iron body and uh, your day gets longer. Uh, but this is what's generally inside and this is why you have to uh, blow it down once a week because the crustiness here, you can see that that is uh, bulbous and these uh, chunks form all the time and they'll grip this float. So this is what's inside. Let's get another view of that. 
here's the float that's been uh, disconnected. Uh, there's a bellows here, a siphon, and this floats and moves up and down and operates this um, cam here. And this is the switch in the back. And this is the heart of the show. This is the really uh, uh, highly engineered component. You've got to pay attention to that top there. The switch is replaceable, um, but it's, and it's fairly expensive. And we'll get into that, I hope, in, at the end of this video. But this hooks to there, like so. Let's see if we can get a good close-up there. There we are. And then as this... See if we can hear it click. So if the water level drops, that turns off the upper contacts and turns on uh, the lower contacts. And so if it's up like that, the lower contacts are off, and that's usually hooked up to a feeder, and the upper contacts are onto the uh, hooked up to the burner circuit. And if the level is at or above, these are closed and the burner fires. So as the water level drops in here, the float will drop and um, see if you can hear this thing clicking. Yeah, that switch is probably shot probably why this thing was replaced and probably caused the uh, the bo bo boiler to dry fire but that's what's inside and so that's why you have to blow it down the rust will collect up in here and you have to periodically test the switch and clear out the contents and and clear out the googies um, this port here as you can see is uh, more or less three quarters inch and is larger than the half inch entrance. So what happens is when you open this, the contents of this, uh, this chamber will drain faster than the water comes in. And as soon as the flow uh, or slows down, best thing to do is shut this, let it go up again for a second, and then open that maybe about two more times until the water comes out like a weak tea uh, and then then you're done you're never going to get all of the rust out uh, there's always going to be rust there's one good thing about these things it's really good at generating rust this is the older style of a blowdown valve if you have one of these older styles some of the original style uh, you've definitely got an older system that's a uh, um, a prime candidate for <laughs> replacement. Um, this thing is difficult to open. You don't get quite the quite the same good flush. This is uh, not used. Uh, this is just uh, added to to show what it looks like. Sometimes I'll add a lever to this thing, but it's still uh, an antiquated and uh, obsolete design. Um, and uh, so again, if you've got one of these things, you've got a system that's uh, very old. These are all the screw holes for the back. There are about a dozen screws that, that hold this thing on and are... Let's see if I've got... Is this the one? Yeah, I had one of these. I tried cutting... Usually I try cutting open these, uh, these switches. Um, and uh, there are a lot of complex parts in here, and so when you cut it open, uh, it's just like a very, it's like a jack-in-the-box with springs flying and parts cutting off all over the place. But the one thing is they, they build these things rather well. The contacts are a silver alloy, and the uh, internals are silver-plated. They really want to make this thing um, work for you. Uh, some of the older styles, if you if you look at it, if you see a, a uh, switch like this, uh, but it's sort of maroon colored, that's for uh, millivolt systems. They even make even more uh, extra care in making these um, very durable and um, pretty reliable for what they are from um, 
a mechanical device. So, I hope this was of assistance to you. Here's the uh, ball valve intact. That's what it looks like from the top. Like so. Uh, this is the, um, there's a gasket here, which wears out. And there's a gasket on the bottom, which wears out. These things wear out fairly quickly. You can see the ball is uh, not shiny anymore uh, like that. Uh, it's been leaking for a while and pretty well uh, scraped up and um, in bad shape. So this thing pretty much um, gets... Uh, trashed. Uh, Sid Harvey used to pay like 25 cents for, for a core charge for these things, but it's not really worth it. Um, so if you have any other questions on how and why uh, this thing want to work, because this video is starting to go on for a fairly long time, um, please uh, ask. Um, and um, if you want to see any other videos uh, discussing other details of this thing, again, ask. And um, as always, I really appreciate your support, and uh, I hope this uh, is helpful. Thanks.